welcome to Your Sparkly Brand. We're here to inspire and empower female entrepreneurs like you. On this podcast, we share valuable how-to content, discuss common mindset challenges, and interview kick-ass women business owners about their journeys. In a world that tries to pit females against each other, Your Sparkly Brand is celebrating successful women, nurturing the next generation, and uplifting each other. I'm Lauren Tassi. I'm a copywriter and launch strategist, and I'm here with my co-host, Megan Gersh. She's a brand and web designer and a marketing expert. Hey, what's Hi, up? Meg. How are you? I'm good. Will you... Tell, tell us a little about our guest. So we are so excited and pumped to have Sasha Canady on as our guest on today. Sasha is a human first marketing obsessed business coach, and she helps change makers transform their small business into life changing brands. And she uses a strategy called marketing made human. So welcome to the podcast, Sasha. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So sh- Sasha, before we jump into your story, uh, we like to start out each episode sharing our sparkly moment of the week. It's like a little win, a little celebration, something, you know, business related that made you feel sparkly. So Meg, do you want to go first? What was your sparkly moment this week? Yeah. So I have been working um, with a client on a website project and finally got the website to the point where I'm handing off the website to the client for feedback. So pretty excited about that. Um, The project has been going really smoothly. So yeah, that's kind of my, my little sparkly moment of the week. What about you? So this one totally came out of the blue. I uh, got an email from somebody yesterday who had downloaded, like I created this workbook like a year ago. I didn't even realize it was still like out there in the world, a free, um, it's like a business building, figure out what kind of business you want to start workbook. I got this email from this girl who was just like, this workbook, like changed my life so much. Like you're really helping me figure out what I'm doing. And I'm just like, Oh my God, like I forgot it was out there. So that just felt so good. And I'm totally going to put a link to it in the show notes if anybody else wants to check that out. That's amazing. I love that news so much. And Sasha, what about you? Okay. So my, this, I promise this is not a downer thing, but my mom actually had a stroke last week and it was, she was in the hospital. It was really scary, but she's fine. She's okay now. And the lesson from it this week, now that I'm kind of getting back to the swing of things of business has been like really reconnecting with like gratitude in my why afterwards. And just like, you know, it's the end of the year. And so like was so stressed about getting things done. And then the moment that happened, it was like, none of that really mattered. None of that would ever matter. And so now coming back and especially planning for 2022 now, I'm like, it just, I have this new perspective of like, instead of just saying like, go, go, go robot, Sasha, what am I going to do next? Now I'm like, okay, how can I bring more joy into my life? How, instead of saying how many courses am I going to launch next year? I'm like, how many times am I going to go visit my mom? So it's just been kind of like a reset for me. And so I think sometimes the universe has a way of doing that when you need it most. So I'm feeling very sparkly about it now. Well, I'm so glad to hear that she's okay. And, you know, that's certainly something to be grateful for, right? To kind of come back to your why and really recognize those small things in life that, you know, you can't really put a price on. So for sure. All right. Well, let's get into it. Um, Sasha, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey? You know, how did you come to start your business? Yeah. So I was not one of those kids that came out of the womb knowing they were going to be an entrepreneur. Um, (laughs) had lemonade stands and all that, but I really was motivated originally. And I promise I'll come back to being a better person. I was really motivated by financial independence because my parents got divorced when I was 12 and And I lost, I saw my mom lose everything in the divorce and she had to claw her way back out of that. And to see her still provide for her kids, it was just, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to depend on a man ever in my life. Like I'm going to be so financially independent. And I just became this like workaholic to, to do that. And I started working, you know, at a really young age as a server and bartender and really kind of learned about customer service through that and talking to people and selling to people and what makes a good experience. I always say everyone should work in the restaurant industry once in their life because it really teaches you so much just about people. And so once I graduated college, I got my first entry-level marketing position and just kind of worked my way up there. And I was like determined to be this like corporate ladder climbing, like work for a big brand. 
And the moment where it kind of shifted for me was when I started two things. I started like a self-love healing journey and started to really dissect things in my past and how it was affecting how I was acting now. And like, like I said, that financial independence being the root of everything I was doing when really it wasn't about that. It was, it's more about just, you know, time freedom and doing the things that I want to do in life. And I, I really went through this healing journey that helped change my perspective. And as I was doing that, I remember sitting down with my boss and I was, I worked at a really stressful digital marketing powerhouse. And my boss told me, he said, Sasha, look, I just, I need you to stop leading with your heart. That was like the thing he said to me, because I was telling him about a situation I was in and I was like, here's what I want to do. And he's like, no, I need you to stop leading with your heart. And like, that was the moment I was like, I don't want to work for anyone else like ever again in my life. After I heard that, like, I'm sure I'm obviously not everyone leader or boss is that way, but I realized like, I don't want to serve one person. Cause that's what I felt like I was doing. It was like, I mean, you guys probably know how it goes. You feel like you're starting to serve your manager more than your customer in like a corporate setting sometimes. And so I want to serve one person. Like I want to serve all people. And so that was the moment I was like, I think I can do this. Like I can take everything I've learned and I can go do this on my own and do things my way. And I, I also saw, I'm sorry, I'm like kind of rambling a little bit, but I also saw people, the new marketers coming in to the company were just so obsessed with like the latest algorithm shifts and the latest platforms and like they all, all these shiny objects and like none of them could tell me like who our customer really was or how to connect with them on an emotional level and so I was like oh my gosh there's really this gap in business and marketing education because they're all just watching all these gurus who are like here's how you blow up overnight and go viral um and they, that's what excited them so I was like I want to go off and teach people about making market marketing human again and so then it just kind of lit this fire and I was like how do I do this and I just right before the pandemic decided I'm going to leave <laughs> and then the pandemic hit. So that was, it was, it's been a crazy ride ever since, but I'll stop talking now and let you interject, but that's kind of how I got to where I am today. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like there's so many businesses that get caught up in those numbers. They get caught up in like, how many sales am I going to make this week? Or what, what kind of, how many Instagram posts do I need to make or any of those kinds of things? When in reality, we sometimes can forget that there's a human being on the other side of the screen, like consuming that content, like all day, every day. And so so I think that that's a really cool point to bring up. I just, when you said that about your manager saying like, don't lead from your heart, like, oh my <laughs> God, I'm just like, I, I want to strangle him. Like that's, oh, that is People not it. Ask me, they're like, is that true? Like, or is that just part of like, is that your story? I was like, no, like that literally was the moment I knew. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you. So tell me, tell me about your business now since, since the pandemic, like what, you know, what, what are you doing differently? Yeah. So I am actually a business coach coach. Um, I'm marketing obsessed though. So I'm more focused on like the marketing side than like getting your LLC and like all that stuff. I know it's important, but I'm really focused on like the marketing and the visibility and getting your brand out there side. And I mostly only work with female entrepreneurs. That was something when I started out, I was like, I really, you know, I want to serve women. I want to be, I want my content to be geared toward women. I want them to feel safe. And I want them to know that they have someone on their side who understands things that they've been through. And there's just, there's so many things that are just, I just want to work with women. So um, I focus mostly with women and I help them, whether it's starting a business, scaling their business, wherever they're kind of at. I take a very personalized approach which, with each client. And then I have a couple like, you know, digital products and templates and things like that to help them along their way as well. Yeah. I can actually attest to working with Sasha. We work together on a product together. So highly recommend if anyone is looking for some guidance um, on, you know, launching your next product or, you know, work working with someone to get that going. If you need somebody to push you, Sasha is a great person to consult. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate that. You were a blast to work with. So I know like a big thing for you has been talking about how entrepreneurs can become change makers. So what does that exactly look like? And how can anyone that's listening to this podcast start to make that shift and like step into that power? Yeah, that's a great question. I feel like like my biggest thing when it comes to like, what is a change maker? What does that mean? It's like really challenging the status quo. It's doing things your way and having a brand that stands for something bigger than just making money or just the normal X, Y, and Z. It's about, you know, helping people change their lives. Like how are you changing people's lives? Whether that's through your art or it's through your marketing service, or it's through a product, a makeup product that you sell. Like how are you changing their life? And really, creating a brand that connects 
connect with their customers on a more human emotional level and really leaves an impact on their life. Like, I guess the question I always like to ask people is when you're not in the room, like, what do you want someone to tell their best friend about you when they're like drinking wine at night? Like, how do you want them to talk about your brand? And so I'm really kind of focused on like, how are you making someone's life better? And I think that there's a couple components that go into that of like how an entrepreneur is like, how do I step into my own power? And that's one, the first step I think is self-discovery. Like you you really need to understand who you are, why you're doing what you're doing and like where you want to go and really healing anything. Like I, I talk about like self-love and healing journey a lot because I think it's like a big piece that a lot of entrepreneurs are missing. They're so focused on business. They don't realize how much if they focus on growing internally in themselves, how much it would multiply whatever they're doing in business. So I think self-discovery is first. Like you just have to know like, like deep down, why are you doing this and why does it matter? And then the second part is strategy. Like how are you going to use that to fuel your product strategy, your marketing strategy? Who are you serving, understanding your customer? You know, how are, you know, how is your marketing strategy going to stand out amongst the crowd? A big tip that I like to give people is like, don't look, um, like look at what your competitors are doing, but use inspiration from other leaders and in other industries to guide your strategy. So, you know, like, how are these big influencers on TikTok? How are they creating these insane cult-like communities? Like, how are they so human? And how can you bring that over to your brand? Things like that. So strategy is a big part. And then the last one is, is how are you showing up? So it's self-discovery strategy and showing up. Like, and that comes down to like consistency that comes down to, you know, how confident you are in your, what you're promoting. It comes through in your mindset of how willing you are to embrace change, to, to go with the punches. Like there's just so much that goes into it. I could talk for hours. I, I love that so much. And I think that, you know, when you're start, when you're first starting a business, when I first started my first business, I was just like, oh yeah, well, I just got to make things and then I got to sell them and, and that's it. But really it's like, when you become an entrepreneur, that is like a serious personal development journey. Like you are going to deal with so much mindset stuff. You're going to deal with so much more than just making something and selling it. And I wish I would have had that sort of knowledge in the beginning, because as you go along, you realize it. Totally. And I think like a big part of it is finding the right community or mentor or or people that you're going to surround yourself with, because if you're trying to do it alone and you're trying to figure it out on your own, you're going to be spinning your wheels, like find someone who has been where you want to go or is where you want to go and connect with them, pick their brain or however you want to work with them on the, the life lessons they've learned, not just the business strategies. Like that's huge. Yeah. And I think one other thing to add like another layer to this, I know that you mentioned that you mostly work with women and we talk about this a lot on the podcast, how just marketing in general feels different. I think because like coming from women, right? Like just because we deal with different things, different emotions, those kinds of things. And I think like when we're putting together strategies, something that kind of comes up a lot is that, you know, something that might work for a man might not work or feel natural to us as women. hundred percent. No, I totally agree. I think there's just like, everyone has that masculine and feminine energy. And I think it's, it's finding the balance balance within yourself, but there's just something about helping lift up and empower other women to be financially secure and to have a career and a life that they own. It's just something I'm super passionate about. And I think that comes a lot down to like society norms and how, you know, the normal household is and how that stuff goes. I think there's just a new wave of women change makers, kind of a generation of change makers coming out into the world right now. You, we've talked about, we talked about a little bit, but in terms of humanizing your marketing, um, what are some um, tips for doing more of that in your business, especially maybe if you're not like a personal brand, maybe you're more service-based or product-based, what advice do you get on that? Yeah. So I think like the first thing it comes down to is knowing who your customer really is inside and out. And I know we've, you've probably heard people say that before, but like, it comes down to more just like than research, like sitting on Google and like, how old are they? Where do they live? Like all those kind of like superficial things. Like I care more about like, what are their problems? What are their fears? 
leaders, what are their goals? What are their dreams? You can sit on Google all day, but one of my favorite pieces of advice to give to people is go find your customer in real life and just talk to them, like get some qualitative data. And like, there's nothing better for your brand than if you go and experience like that one-on-one emotion and like hear their story and like, you know, go talk to a couple people who all come from different backgrounds, but are all your customer and, and just see like what, like if it could be as simple as like, let's say you sell candles, even going to like a candle shop and just striking up a conversation with someone who's looking at candles there. You could talk about what, what they're looking for. You could talk about what that smell means to them. Like just talk to them. Like you're just going to get such a more, a better idea of who the person on the other side of the screen when you're marketing to is. And it's just going to make such a difference. So that would be the first thing. It's just like research, but like also just go talk to them and even just brainstorming. The best is when you are your own target customer. That's when it's the easiest. I have a lot of people who are like, oh yeah, I actually am. I'm I'm targeting my, who I was five years ago. And that's perfect. But you know, sometimes it's really just about going through some branding exercises or target customer exercises about like, what are they doing on the weekend? Where are they spending their time? What's something that's frustrating them right now in this season of winter? Like, you know, like really just like asking yourself those questions. And then the biggest thing, especially when you're dealing with assumptions that you're making is testing and learning if th- those assumptions are are correct. So going and creating content based off of those insights that you found and like, how did that perform? Well, this one didn't, no one resonated with that idea, but they did with this one. So let me kind of narrow in there. And what else can I learn there? And I think that that's a big thing is being really open, especially in the beginning when you're growing your business and learning is testing and learning different things to see like, I don't know what it is, but every time I talk about this, it blows up. Like there's some sort of human truth or insight there that you need to to dig at a little bit. Those are even the biggest things for people who are really just looking to like get started or how can I just change my mindset around this a little bit? Yeah. I feel like like the main thing that I've gotten from you around this is like really tapping into like listening to like what is working and what is I think it would be rare to say, to find entrepreneurs that say like, oh, my business is like the same, you know, the day that I started as it is, you know, five years from then. So really taking note of those things that pop out as like, these are successes or these are things that didn't work out like as well, or I like tried this thing and it, you know, maybe it didn't work this time, but it worked when I did this instead. So, you know, taking note of all of those little shifts, I think is, is a super good tip. Yeah, I totally agree. So I know that you have created some awesome time-saving and sanity-saving tools. You want to tell us about maybe some of your own as well as like maybe other tools that you recommend to entrepreneurs? Yeah. So the tool that I created, it's a content strategy and calendar planning tool. And basically what I did is I couldn't find anything for con that combined content strategy and content planning into one tool. It was kind of like all the softwares and Planoly and later, they were all just about like planning and scheduling your content and not about really diving into the strategy of, you know, what are our pillars and what are some ideas we can talk about under that? What, if, who is our customer? And so I kind of created this Google Sheets template that on the first tab is all about building out your content strategy. So everything I just mentioned, your content strategy statement, your mission, your core values, all these things that are going to help you have a more well-rounded, captivating and relatable brand versus just, oh yeah, I'm going to share some tips on this today. But then it also combines like annual planning and monthly calendar tabs for each month. So you can take that strategy and those ideas and turn them into an actual plan for your business. So that's, that's my tool. And it's what I use with all my clients. And it's funny because the reason it actually came to be a product of mine, was someone on TikTok just asked me like, how do you plan your content? So I made a video about this doc that I use and literally thousands of comments were like, where can I buy this? And I was like, Oh, here we go. Like I will, I'll make it for you. And so I spent the next literally 48 hours of my life making it something that I would actually want to sell and present to people because of course it was just kind of thrown together in my own little way and then and I said here it is and it just kind of blew up and I think that that right there actually is a really good example of human first marketing is I really listened to what people were saying they wanted and what they needed and acted very fast to give it to them and to be the first to market I guess with something that they needed so that's one that I've created but like I'm a huge fan I know my 
Megan, you're probably like, I hear you talk about this so much of Flowdesk. It's the tool that I use for email marketing. And I am just obsessed with it because I'm an email marketer at heart. It's kind of where I started in the marketing world. And I've never seen a tool like Flowdesk. Do both of you use it or just Megan? No? Okay. So it's just, it's woman owned and created. So like that right there, like every little detail about it is just so intuitive. It's beautiful. It makes it fun to create workflows and to set up your emails and beautiful like templates and things like that. And it's just makes like I was using MailChimp before and I just like would bang <laughs> my head against the wall with like how the design was. And it was just, it wasted so much time. So if you're anything like me and you you're wasting time because you want something to look really nice for your brand, you use a tool like Flowdesk and you'll save so much time. So yeah, that's my favorite. That and Calendly. I use Calendly too. If someone wants to schedule something with me, it's a tool where, you know, it's connected to my Google calendar so they can easily find a time. I use it for paid things. People can pay to book time with me as well. So it just saves me a ton of time. What about you guys? Well, I have to agree with you on the Flowdesk front. I mean, I remember being on the call with you when we were talking about that and I was like, what is everybody talking about this Flowdesk thing? Like, what is all the ruckus about? And then I tried it and I was like, oh, like this is why everybody's talking about this tool. Like it's just amazing. It's far more intuitive and beautiful than any other email marketing tool on the market right now. So I definitely agree with you on that one. Calendly, also another amazing time-saving tool. I'm also really loving Descript. Basically, it is a like a computer app and website where you can, I, I use it every single time I sit down to edit this podcast. And the cool thing about it is that you can um, drag in the video that we'll have like from this call. You drag in the video, it transcribes the entire video and you can edit the video almost like if you were to edit like a word doc. So you could edit out all of the ums. It's like huge time-saving tool, but highly recommend if anybody has a podcast uh, or thinking about starting a podcast, the script has been a huge, huge time saver for me. Oh my God. I just wrote that down. Like I <laughs> don't want to lose that nugget. There's this, I have any, I have no, not considered talking about this on the podcast, but I just started using, um, it's, it's more of a product productivity thing. Um, it's called centered and it's like, what it does is you like set up some tasks and then you start a workflow and it plays like ambient music and it gives you like the 25 minute breaks. I've only used it for like a week or two. Um, but it definitely like keeps me focused when I need to be focused in the moment and then like gives you a break when you need it. And then you can also like turn your camera on and see all the other people working. It's really interesting. I haven't paid for it yet. There's like a free version you can try um, just if focus is a problem for you, which is a huge problem for me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm writing that one down as well. Is that like a computer app or what is that? It's just a website. Like you don't have to download anything. So I found it through, I, I get these emails, like focus playlist emails. Um, and it, they were like sponsored one of the playlists for the week or something. I was like, I'll try this. Um, but I can, I can send you a link. I can put a link in the show notes. Um, again, I think it's pretty new, so there might still be some bugs. Awesome. Oh, I think another like hack that like, I always forget about. So I'll bring it up now is to listen to like podcasts or videos or YouTube videos, or even like something you're trying to learn at like 1.5 X speed or two X speed. There's just, it makes it so much faster and you still comprehend everything. Like it's been a game changer when I actually remember to do it. You know, I feel like people in real life talk too slow. Now that I listen to so many podcasts and audiobooks on like two yeah. times speed. Yeah, totally. So what, Sasha, what was like a, one aha moment or a big turning point for you in your business? Oh, I would say I do a lot of content marketing and I think every brand should. And so like content production and stuff. And I think the big moment that things changed for me was when I stopped thinking about, now I'm like the personal face of my brand. So this is more kind of towards people who are that as well. But when I stopped thinking about what my content was going to make people think about me and transformed it to be, what is my content going to make someone think and feel about themselves? Like, how is it going to serve them? I was just able to completely step into my own power as a content creator. And I just I started showing up more authentically. I showed more personality. I was more confident. Like I just stopped caring about if it looked perfect or what I sounded like. And like, that's such a huge leap to get over. Like it took me, I think a year and a half on TikTok before I really got comfortable feeling that way. But I think that that was the, the moment for me was when I was like, this isn't about you anymore. This is about like who you're, who you're serving. And I think if you're able to make that mindset shift, it's going to be huge for you. I love that so much. And as somebody who kind of watched that 
transformation. Like I, you could definitely tell like a, a shift in your content. And it was like one of those things where it's like all the time. Well, dude, like what happened here? Like, who is this <laughs> chick? She's just like doing her thing. Like, it's amazing. I know it's so funny. It's so people are always like, I literally got messages and comments like what? I don't know what's going on, but keep doing it. Like I, and I think it really was, it was about a lot of personal choices I was making as well. Like I think the ability that for that mindset shift to happen was because I was, I was working on myself. I was getting into the gym again. So I felt better about how I was looking, but, or how I was feeling and just showing up. And I started to remove people from my life who were making me not so happy every day. And so when I showed up to make content, I was happier and had more energy. Like that's something people do like, do not think about enough is how much energy comes into play with business and how you show up in your content. Like people are attracted to energy. Like that's what's that's the real thing that someone decides in the first five seconds if they want to stay and watch your video or not. Like, I know we talk a lot about like hooks, you need to have a good hook, but really it's also energy in the first five seconds. I think as soon as I started showing up that way, when I started to see the feedback and the results of how my content performed, I like, there was no going back. I was like, oh my God, this is the only way to do this. And so, yeah, I think that that was huge. That is awesome. I love it so much. Let's talk a bit about like, are there any big brands or people that you kind of look to for? Or inspiration as far as like people that you think are just like killing it in the industry? That's a really good question. So I am a huge fan. I don't know if you guys even know her of Sunny Leonard Doozy. Are you familiar? You, you know her? Okay. Yeah. She's like a YouTube guru and she's just somebody that I've always admired of how she shows up on camera. But like lately she's been really owning like her, her beliefs and really stepping into like this new zone of genius in her content. So that's someone that I, I always kind of go to um, for video marketing in particular of, of learning things. What about you guys? Has anybody seen, they found me on Instagram because it's like, I'm the perfect target. It's called psychedelic water. Have you seen this Meg? Have you been targeted by this? The neurotropics in the water, you know, like the ad adaptogens and all that stuff that's really buzzy right now. But again, it's like, I like there can, can't actually be sparkling but it's got like some holographic features. And I like followed them for a little bit just because I was like, what is this? This is so, they found me, like they found the right person. But then I kind of, I, you know, I try to like cut out anything that's not like seriously adding value to my life when it comes to following people. But um, they were doing some interesting stuff. Cool, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, so let's talk about like, if you could time travel, go back in time and give your younger self just one piece of advice, what would that be? I think that my... <laughs> I would definitely tell myself to stop overthinking and just take messy action because when you are first getting started or you're not exactly sure what you're doing, <laughs> you overthink everything and you're not ever going to know until you just start putting things out into the universe and you see how you feel doing it, how other people react. Is it working? Is it not? Like my brand and my vision has changed so much over the last, you know, six months compared to when I first even started a couple years ago. And, you know, I could have never possibly came up with what I have now and where I want to go two years ago. I just couldn't because I just, I didn't know the things that I know. I didn't go through the challenges. I didn't have the aha little moments. So like, I think the biggest thing is just to get started, to execute. My biggest thing is messy action. And then like there's seasons for your business. And in the beginning, it needs to be messy action. And then there'll be the season of like clean Clean up and scale. That's what I, that's what I'm kind of in right now is clean up and scale. Um, but if you don't ever take that messy action, I think that's where so many businesses fail is because they never really get the traction or they don't really get started because they can't overcome what's in their head. Solid advice. What do you, Sasha? What are you working on right now? What are what are you excited about that's coming up? Oh gosh, that's a really good question as well. Um, yeah, I think like I kind of alluded to this. 2022 is kind of my year of scale. So I've tried a lot of things over the last year. I've tested and learned. I've failed forward. I've had some really good wins too. And now it's about building up a team that can support me. It's about really narrowing in on my offerings and how I want to scale them and reach more people. And so in terms of a project, I don't really have a new project coming up because I am, I am cleaning up right now. Like that is, that's just, 
that is what it is. And I hopefully I'll have a new announcement in a couple of months here yet. But I think the biggest thing for me is just serving more people, getting in front of more people. I love it. And so where can anyone listening find you online? Yeah. So I'm mainly on TikTok and Instagram and Pinterest. And my username is bizcoachsasha across all. Actually, I think on Pinterest, it's bizcoachsasha1 because, oh my gosh, Pinterest. I had like five accounts. Does anyone else like end up with five Pinterest accounts by accident over like, I don't even know. So anyways, I'm clearly not a Pinterest expert, but uh, yeah, Biz Coach Sasha, you can find me um, on TikTok mainly if you're really looking for some really good content, but Instagram as well. Awesome. And the tool you mentioned, is that available? Can we put a link to that? Um, the content planning and strategy? Yes. I will actually give you guys a discount link to put into the show notes. And that is something that if anyone can go and take advantage of, and there's way more information about everything that it does on the page. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sasha, for joining us today. It has been such a fun time to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much, listeners, for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review and be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Until next time, stay sparkly.